hey all you cool cats and kittens it's miss bickle with your second acting lesson Woo now keep in mind these lessons are geared towards theater acting whereas movie acting is a little bit different in the technique but still these are great basics you can take with you if you want to keep pursuing acting which i really want you to do now theater acting the word theater have you ever seen it spelled theater E-R at the end versus theater R-E. There's a reason for R-E versus E-R. Shout out to my college theater teacher, Dr. Ball, who's a friend of mine on Facebook, who I hope is seeing this and is super proud of me. What? She taught me that theater E-R is the place. Theater R-E is the art. Pretty simple, right? A lot of times you'll use the E-R instead of R-E, even when you mean the art and not the place because you don't want to have to explain it to someone. Another shout out to Dr. Ball, while I'm talking about her, about things that I learned in college from her. The word O-F-T-E-N is pronounced often. Use it and you sound super smart. Today's lesson is about acting through your voice, using your voice. But first, let me take a selfie. I swear I took one, see? Anyway, now that I'm dating myself, first, let's do a warm-up. So what do we warm up again? How many things are there? Three. We warm up your mind. We warm up your body. And we warm up your voice. Now there's one other thing we're going to warm up, but I'll talk about that in a minute. Okay, remember Alive Alert Awake Enthusiastic? Yeah, we're not doing that today. So why do we warm up? Besides the three parts. It helps us relax. It helps us alleviate stress. And it helps get rid of anxiety. Or at least part of it. Also, it helps us move freely, which is a lesson in itself. We might get to that in another episode, hint, hint. Back to those three parts. There's an extra one we need to focus on, right? That's also facial. You gotta warm up that beautiful face. But before we get ahead of ourselves, let's warm up those three parts, okay? This is a warm up I like to call sevens. A lot of people, a lot of theaters like to call it crazy eights or eights. Okay, really simple to do sevens or eights. I'm doing it sevens. Sorry, other people. You just need to take each limb and shake it. I mean, shake it like a Polaroid picture. Shake it while counting to the number you're currently on. We're going to count back from seven. I'll show you how to do it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Right leg. Then your left leg. But don't do it that unenthusiastic. Really mean it. Jump around. Shake it. And use your voice. Remember, we gotta work that out. And use your mind to keep track of what number you're on. See? All three parts. Are you ready? Right hand first. Ready, set, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 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 One, two, three, four, five, six. 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 One, two, three, four, five. 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 One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, 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 woo! I forgot to mention that part. When you get down to one, you're gonna scream, hey! You can do another sevens or eights and actually warm up every inch of your body. Now that other thing that I mentioned, you have to warm up your face. Yeah, we're gonna do that right now. I know with COVID-19, people are paranoid to touch their face. Just make sure you wash your hands before and after you touch your face and you'll be fine. Wash your hands, you filthy animal. Now talking about facial vocal warm-ups, Sharpe Evans knew what was up. Ma, ma, ma. That's an exercise you can do if you want to be like high school musical. Otherwise, listen up for some more. Now rub your face, starting with your cheeks, all right? Rub them, rub them, rub them up, rub them down. Pretend you're putting on a cleanser. 
rub anywhere that feels a little tense. You know how you can tell? <gasps> I'm shocked. Mm, I'm sad. Where do you feel that's moving when you move your face around? Move that. Yeah. Now pretend you're a great big lion that needs to yawn. <sighs> okay, it felt good. Now, even if you're yawning for real or not, big movements. Now rub and make those big movements. The sillier, the better. Now, when you do this again, yawn ah, down high to low, kind of like vocal sirens, which is my favorite warm up for musical theater. Just go high to low and pitch. Okay, my face is feeling kind of loose. I'm ready to move on. Pop quiz. What's the vegetable that makes you cry when you cut it? Ding, ding, ding. It's an onion. I want you to say that word with me. Onion. Onion. Do you feel all those sounds? Feel all that stuff going on? Do it again. And this time hold out the ny. Onion. Where do you feel it? In your nose. Here's another vocal warm up. It's a little bit more advanced, but it's a staple in the theater community. There's different variations of it. This is the one I like. So deal. Red letter, yellow leather, Good blood, bad blood. Say it all together. Red letter, yellow leather, good blood, bad blood. Make sure you have all of those sounds come out of your face. Make sure all those consonants really speak. Speed it up. Red letter, yellow leather, good blood, bad blood. How fast can you go? Impress me, send me a video. Ah, tongue twisters. Unique, New York. Unique, New York. You know you need unique New York. Try it faster. Just that sentence. Just you know you need unique New York. See, I did it. You know how you can do it faster? Diction. Which brings me to my next part of this lesson. Think dip, D-I-P. Diction, inflection, projection, dip. I don't know if anybody else calls it that, but mm, it works for me. Diction is how clearly you speak, making all of the consonants stand out. However, some consonants need to stand out more than others. Your ending consonants especially, and make sure those S's are not taking over the word. Also when you're singing, if you hold out your S's, I'm pretty sure the rest of the chorus will hate you. The I in dip stands for inflection, which really is using pitch to show emotion with your voice. If you remember in music, pitch means ah, ah, how high and how low the note goes. Now, when you are actually speaking, you use pitch. Can you imagine if I talked like this the entire time? I didn't change my pitch. It always stayed in the middle. I didn't go any higher or lower. I might go louder and I might go softer, but it's very different than if I used inflection. But sometimes in theater, you need to do the opposite of what is natural to you. It's actually a better way to be heard by the audience. When I'm making a statement, when I'm speaking in real life, a lot of times I want to go down with my voice. I like to go down with my voice. You won't really be heard that well. I like to go down with my voice. I didn't go low into the basement like I want to. And yes, I went a little bit louder. Volume definitely helps. Remember the whole point of learning how to be a better actor is to really shine, right? Stars stand out. So do the opposite of what feels natural. Try it. Finally, the P in dip is projection. Projection is throwing your voice. Not yelling, but throwing your voice. If you're projecting correctly, you're using your diaphragm, which if you've ever been in choir or music or anything, you've probably heard about that part of your body. That is the muscle directly below your lungs that help you breathe, help you sing, help you speak. Everything without getting winded. 
Now using that diaphragm again, think lower. When you project, you should feel that move. You shouldn't feel strain in your voice, okay? There's a difference. I'm going to say the word acting, both yelling and projecting. Acting! I felt strain right here. Acting! Ah! It's also all up here. Acting! I don't feel any strain at all. The air is coming from below. Acting! Open up your mouth. Remember, use your diaphragm, not your throat. I think it's about time to do a little theater exercise, don't you? This was an exercise I learned in a Broadway master class. The one I mentioned from the first episode. Yeah, well, I took away a lot from that. All you need to do is say the word project, okay? Now, everyone take a ball. Remember we did that exercise from the first one where you imagine a ball? Yeah, we're doing that again. Take that ball and put the word project in it, okay? That's your voice. Wind it up and throw it across the room as far as you can. Project! If you yell or feel strain in your throat, you're doing it wrong. Try to make sure you use your diaphragm. Yelling doesn't count. Got it? What if I was in another room? Project! I swear I'm in another room. Can you hear me? Now this really works well when you're on a stage and you just keep backing up, backing up. See how far you can throw your voice. It helps if you have someone else in the room that can tell you if they hear you yelling or if they don't hear you at all. Try it. Try it from one room of the house to the other, especially when your parents are sleeping. Just kidding. Now let's try another exercise where we're focusing on dip. Diction, inflection, projection, okay? If you were in the musical at Bear Creek this year, or at least rehearsed for it, you'll know this exercise. This exercise is called, how could you? First of all, when you have the word could and you, make sure it's not how could you with a J. There are many feelings behind the phrase, how could you, how could you? How could you? How could you? <gasps> Try to see how many different ways you can switch up the inflection while keeping projection and the diction. Go back and forth with someone else and keep score. How could you? If you notice that their diction was meh, their inflection eh, or their projection uh-uh, then dock them a point. Give them a bonus point if you really believe the intent behind that. Then be sure to email me with footage from any of these exercises you try at home. If you've made it this far, great! Now you're ready to explore your voice. You know what I'm talking about. Accents! You might be thinking, Miss Bickle, you are from Pennsylvania. You've always been in Pennsylvania. How do you know how to speak from any other part of the world? Oh, it's simple. I had to play many different characters in plays, and when you're acting, you have to be believable, right? I mean, I can't exactly pretend I'm from England and sound like I'm from Nipa, right? Let's hear that a couple, two, three times, all right? Now, accents are not actually different languages. It's just different dialects, different ways the English language you know is changed. Here are a few different accents that I had to actually learn and perform on stage. The first one, British. You might think, okay, British, Harry Potter, all right, but there's different kinds, as with the other accents. Now, there are many different parts of England that you could portray, but the very big difference is Queen's English fancy versus Cockney, which is usually the lower class, poorer way to speak. Not knocking on anyone that has a Cockney accent for real. Just saying on stage it usually means you're poor. Now the Queen's English, you can think of Mary Poppins, all right? You can say, I'm practically perfect in every way. Notice it's really just the English language really fancy. 
Now, Cockney, you can think of poorer areas or poorer people like Eliza Doolittle from My Fair Lady or anyone from the cast of Oliver. Let me show you the difference, okay? Let's start with regular Queen's English. The way I get into a British accent, I just think of the name Harry Potter. Harry Potter. Harry Potter. If you make it more grand, it's more of a Queen's English. Round tones, very, very fancy. Now you can take Harry Potter to Harry Potter. Get rid of the T's and you instantly become Cockney. Harry Potter. And you extend everything. That's another one. When you use the TH words, get rid of the TH and put an F. You get rid of everything. The last show I did, I had to use a Cockney accent the entire time. And that was Matilda the Musical as Mrs. Wormwood. I was going on three times playing that role. Then COVID happened. <sighs> but really stay safe and at home. I don't care how bummed you are. Be safe. My first line in Matilda. <clears throat> Is this going to take much longer, Doctor? I've got a plane to catch at free. Okay, let's transition to Southern. Another accent I had to perform. The two big differences, the Southern Belle or from the sticks, the deep south. I'm talking the difference between Gone with the Wind and Tiger King. With Southern, you draw out a lot of the one syllable words. Now, when you have the deep south, when you draw out those words, it's a little more nasal and you kind of make those sounds a little bigger. But the real deep south keep their teeth together, which is kind of hard to understand on stage. But it's genuine, I promise. You talk with your teeth together, you have a little bit more of that sound, like you're from the deep south, you know? Remember, Southern, you want to sound as realistic as possible. So you should know what area of the south you're trying to portray before you actually try to portray it. I had to play a character, Angela Bodine from Honky Tonk Angels, that she was in a trailer park and she had a husband named Bubba. And needless to say, she was definitely a deep south accent. And then even when I sang, I had to sound like that. Not to mention I had to eat bologna sandwiches with mayonnaise every night with pork rinds. Mmm, and then sing. It's great. It's actually pretty fun to talk like this for a while. You get stuck. I can talk like this all day if I want to. Notice how I make my lips make a W if I want to. That's another thing that's a nice tip. Now let's actually lead into another accent that uses the W to change up some of the vowels and the sounds. Okay, New York, Brooklyn. I had to play a character, a nun, that was actually from Brooklyn. It was kind of tricky. She also had to sing like she was in a country jamboree. Yeah, that was a tricky one. But anyway, talking about like if she was from Brooklyn, you want to make sure that you can hear it. The phrase that helps me get into it, Tony tells the time. Tony tells the time. Except, put it in the front of your mouth and you kind of get a little, you keep your mouth kind of closed a little bit. Tony tells the time. Use your tongue a little bit more than your teeth, all right? You talk like you're from Brooklyn. You notice that I have a little bit of a W when I say talk. Talk like you're from Brooklyn. Coffee talk. The front of your mouth, when you keep it like that, it's actually very similar to Cockney accent that we're going back to, but let's focus on Brooklyn, all right? Also, that W I was talking about, it replaces the ah sound. Like I said, coffee talk. Okay, you put a W in front of the ah. Now that's a little bit extreme, coffee talk. It's a little bit more realistic. Now a lot of shows will actually ask for usually females to have a higher New York annoying accent. Audrey and Little Shop of Horrors, Lily St. Regis and Annie, Adelaide from Guys and Dolls. And they talk just like that, but it's up here. And you put it in your nose. You sometimes come out of there because it would be annoying if you're up here the whole time they can't understand it. Remember inflection from dip. If you stay in one place too long, people, 
zone out. Speaking of Adelaide, a little tip, I never had to actually portray anyone from this continent, but Australian. A tip I heard from an Australian from a podcast I heard is the word Adelaide is actually the most Australian you can sound if you say it like so. Adelaide, make it almost an, a long I sound. Adelaide, Adelaide, see? Australian. Now going back to roles that I actually portrayed, another one is French. I had to play a fancy French lady in the musical Catch Me If You Can. And it's tough because French is very hard to understand on, on a stage, let alone in real life. The tip is smooth transitions, some nasalness, not high, not annoying, lots of eh sounds, eh, bring it down, eh, and in the back of your throat, in French, it's very romantic. And use the back of your throat. <laughs> yeah, phlegm. But not too much when you're on stage. You might mess up the mic and the sound guy will not appreciate that. When you speak French, you have a lot of that phlegm, but you do not use too much. You have a little bit of the French accent if you keep it a little bit smooth. You do not want to overdo it. Keep the tongue in the front of your mouth like when you were talking like Brooklyn. Tony tells the time. And also ER, you go like air. <sighs> Smooth air. Smooth air. French. <sighs> when you use any word with an R, add a little phlegm. French. Not that much. French. French. I hope you learned a little bit today about accents and how to use your voice properly using dip. Now, if you really want to master some accents, go online, YouTube, you're already here. So why not look around? Here's another game that we are going to use all the skills you learned today. It's called Honey, I Love You. It's very simple. All you have to do is one person says, Honey, I love you. And the other person says, honey, I love you too, but I just can't laugh. It's just like sausage. Try to get the other person to laugh. Go back and forth. Bonus points. If you use accents, different inflections, body movements, go nuts. For instance, honey, I love you. Honey, I love you too, but I just can't laugh. Now the person that's not supposed to be laughing, don't worry about going crazy. Just don't laugh. Go back and forth. Try it. Send it to me. Send it to me to my school email, jessica.bickle at bearcreekschool.com. Or you can just tag your video in this post. Whatever. I want to see the theater happening. I hope you learned something today, everybody. Stay safe. Keep making people believe.